Hey there guys, this is Fang Looper, or however you know me by. Today I have for you a bit of a faster video in the form of the infamous god of revelry, Bacchus. With previous deities in the series, you build them typically with a bit more protections than any form of damage building items, except for maybe one or two just so that you can get a little bit of extra damage in there, just so that you can keep yourself alive and actually feel like you're doing something to the enemy team instead of just disrupting them. Now, Barkus though, he relies a lot more on dealing the damage than he does with protections, and he can deal a lot of damage. He excels at dealing the damage wreaking havoc on the enemy team, disrupting them with his crowd control or CC abilities, and generally just being an utter nightmare to deal with. I say this because... well... we did okay during the match, as you will see. And I think we have shown the enemy team that you can never trust a Barkus, because he will kill you, given the chance. And he will relish it. Apologies, I just really enjoy playing Barkus as a character. He's just so fun to play, as are most of the damage-based guardians in the game. But anyway, while Barkus can be built a bit more protective, uh, typically you would want to do that in order to just survive longer. He is mainly a damage based guardian, so you do want to go with items that will deal the damage for you. Uh, more on the build later though, because that will come, that will come in time. Today we will be covering the following aspects of playing Barkus in order to make you an effective and scary side on the battlegrounds, because trust me, he may look like he's just a drunkard, but he will demolish if you run the right build and you know what you're doing. First off we'll be going over the abilities and then the ability combos. Next we'll move on to the items that I picked up for this game, relic choices, and then I'll just leave the video running for you guys to watch on. So without further ado, let's get right into the abilities. To start off with, we'll discuss his passive. This is known as Drunkometer. As you perform as you perform certain actions in the game, namely using Chug or killing an enemy god, you become more intoxicated. This grants you buffs to your magical power and your damage mitigations. This has three levels overall, with two of these, Tipsy and Smashed, granting these buffs. You'll notice if you look at the lower left hand corner of the screen, where your passive icon is, that you have a progression bar as well as a number percentage. This tells you exactly what tier of drunk you are. It always pays to try to, and keep it up as much as possible, but make sure to not do this so much that you run out of mana to actually use your abilities, because that will make you dead. And if you're dead, then your drunkometer goes right back down to zero. Very straightforward, so we'll move on to the first ability. Chug is your first ability, and this is just as simple as your Drunkometer. Essentially it raises your passive by 40% once you use it, and then it grants you extra magical protections, or well, extra protections in general actually, for 6 seconds. Make sure to use this to keep your Drunkometer topped up as high as you can, just so you have the extra damage mitigation and power. Honestly there's very little reason to not do this as there's honestly no real downsides except for your mana management, but honestly later on in the match this doesn't matter that much anyways, because you'll have more than enough mana. A handy tip though is to use Chug when you're at Fountain, since you regenerate your health and mana when you're in base. Uh, essentially that means that you can use Chug as often as you like when you're in base, or any ultimate, or any abilities in general. I wouldn't recommend using an ultimate, but 
you can essentially cast anything that you want and you will regenerate the mana instantly, pretty much. As you play Bacchus more, you'll know exactly when to activate this to full effect to conserve your mana, meaning that you'll use Chug when it's a little bit lower down in percentage. Saying that though, an easy way to learn this quickly is to just not use Chug until you're just about to go down from Smash to Tipsy or Tipsy to not Tipsy. Just activate it just before it gets out of that tier because essentially it will rise you up above. And also just over time you'll learn through looking at the percentage just how much you gain from that. Belly Flop is your second ability and this is your main source of engaging and escaping the enemy. You leap into the air then slam down at the location that you picked and you deal damage in an area of effect or AOE around them. If you're at least on the tipsy tier this will also slow enemies that you hit for two whole seconds. There isn't too much to explain about the ability though the only real tip that I can give you is to try and predict where the enemy will be and try and put your belly flop over there and try to get the timing down as quick as you can so that you can actually land right on top of them and you know, well, and that will come with time uh, predicting where the enemy will be. Next up for your third ability is Belch of the Gods. This is a cone ability that you cast for 2 seconds, dealing damage over time until the ability ends. If you are either tipsy or smashed, when the ability ends you stun the enemy for 1 second. In addition, using this applies a healing debuff of 40% to enemies affected for 4 whole seconds, and while you're casting this, you are completely knocked back immune. Note that you don't need to hit an enemy with any of this ability except the very end in order to actually stun them. This is one of your best methods for locking down an enemy and preventing them from escaping, forcing them to stay in team fights, or just disrupting them while dealing a decent amount of damage. Finally, your ultimate ability is Intoxicate. This is a large area of effect ability. This gives the hostile team the intoxicated crowd control effect for 6 seconds. Essentially this is a crowd control ability specific to Bacchus that makes the movement of the enemy team difficult, causing them to walk back and forth and it also in fact distorts their vision while they are under the effect of this. As well as this, if you're in the smashed tier of your Drunkometer, this ability increases your magical power for 5 seconds after using your ultimate. This is an amazing finish or initiation tool, and it can deal ridiculous amounts of damage if you've built a lot of damage based items. Whilst the crowd control messes with the enemy and causes them to be less effective in combat, for a long period of time. To expand on this though, we will next be going over ability combinations and how to maximize your effectiveness with Bacchus. As mentioned, it pays to use Chug to stay smashed as long as you can, but typically the only time you would use Chug in a team fight would be in order to proc or procure items that you build, such as Polynomicon. We'll discuss this later on and at some point I'll make a video on the glossary of terms used in Smite just so that people who aren't very well versed in it can kind of understand where I'm coming from and what I'm talking about. With that out of the way, most of your combos involve leaping in with belly flop, using your belch to stun the enemy, then using the stun time to activate your ultimate as a finisher. Other options could be to belly flop or blink onto the enemy, then activate your ult 
and then use belch just in order to make it a bit harder to escape bonus points as well if you pick up and use a blink instead of your belly flop because then you can use a second ability to escape instead another thing to keep in mind uh, you have better dam to have better damage output is to try and land an auto attack or two just after stunning the enemy Whilst it isn't required, it definitely ups your damage and makes it a bit more consistent and is in fact one of the best ways to increase the value of you buying Polynomicon, as I've mentioned. Speaking of Poly, let's now jump into the build that I picked up for this match. So you'll see with my build, I went a standard route that I've gone for most of the other gods that I've already picked in this, but then halfway through I swapped over to focus on to picking up damage items. We were performing really well, and Barkus can be a nightmare to face when he's got a lead and is building damage, so I decided to make the most of that. Also, he's better served acting as a damage character over just protecting the team, in my personal opinion. So as you've seen me go, and probably will go with most of the gods in the Guardian category, the first item I picked up are Shoes of Focus, otherwise called Blue Boots. These, as mentioned, are a solid foundation to start with and they offer decent stats across the board. Second up is Breastplate of Valor. This is another typical pick that I go with. I picked this up early in order to gain the benefit of the lowered cooldowns and the extra protections, and it will allow me to stay in the fight more often due to the increase in mana and the protections as mentioned. Our final conventional pick is our third item, which is Voidstone Pendant. This item gives a solid boost to your power and lowers the magical protections of the enemy in an aura around you, meaning that you'll hit them harder as well. Now with that half of the build done, let's move on to the new items that I selected for Barkus. First up, I grab Bancroft's Talon. This item grants you lifesteal and gives a significant boost to your magical damage. This item has always been a solid choice for damage oriented guardians, as well as a lot of mages because of the good lifesteal wherein you heal for damaging an enemy. This is a great tool su to sustain yourself and to keep you alive during the fights. Whilst it isn't as strong as using a relic such as meditation or receiving heals from another teammate, it has no cooldowns for you to worry about and will just always be there as you're hitting the enemy. Next is where your playstyle might change a little bit, as we'll be picking up Polynomicon, otherwise known as Poly for short. This is another lifesteal item that gives you a small boost in power, but the main use of it and the main reason people pick it up is because of the effectiveness of the passive. Once you use any ability, you proc Polynomicon. What this exactly means is that for 8 seconds, your next auto attack will deal an additional 75% of your magical power as bonus damage to the target. This has a cooldown of 3 seconds but can activate on the use of any ability, including Chug. The most effective method of using this is Belch, as it stuns the enemy in place, essentially allowing you to hit them without any worry of them escaping. Keep in mind though, if you do miss the auto attack, you will need to use another ability to gain the enhanced auto back. Finally, the last item that I picked up was Kronos Pendant. This item was picked mainly due to the increased cooldowns that you receive from it, as well as the bit of a damage boost that it gives you. The passive is handy as well, making sure that you gain those cooldowns just a little bit faster. Of course, this is just an idea on items to pick up, and you have a lot of different ones you can choose. I encourage you to experiment with items and see what works best for you on the characters. Other possible choices could be Gem of Isolation, Ethereal Stuff, or even items like Spear of Desolation, if you decide to go a bit more damage focused than hybrid like I'm going. Next up are my Relic choices. I began the match by picking up a Blink. This is basically a short range teleport. Keep in mind with this ability to avoid being hit by enemies when you want to activate it, as you need to not be hit for a full two seconds before you can actually activate Blink. As such, Blink is normally used for either chasing an escaping enemy or engaging on them to start a team fight. Barkus is great at either of these, being able to Blink onto a retreating enemy just so that he can ult to finish them off, or to Blink into the midst of the enemy team in order to ult or use his belch to stun, 
making the rest of your team commit to the fight and giving you the one up on the enemy. The second relic that I picked up was Purification Beads, also known simply as Beads. As a damage guardian, you can afford to be a bit more selfish with your relic choices, so I decided to pick up this one as it lets you become CC or crowd control immune for a set amount of time. You can tell how long as you will gain a yellow glow over yourself for a set amount of time with it. This item was selected as they had a Cerberus, an Ulla and an Achilles, all characters with very dangerous crowd control. Cerberus has an ultimate that has a pull that he can actually control. Ulla has an axe that stuns you, setting you up for his combo, which is extremely dangerous to take on. And Achilles has a stun with his shield, which is a good setup for his teammates. As such, Beads was a good choice in my opinion, as it would allow me to not be hampered by these effects if used in the right times. With the core of the guide out of the way, I'll leave you now for the rest of the video. If you have any questions or anything, please feel free to ask away. I hope you have a good day and or night, and I'll see you in the next video. Uh, I'm getting into some of this smite diesel.